and uh, it is evening, this uh, man was full of from, from the beginning onwards, he was saying, at one moment he woke up. When he woke up, he heard the preacher saying, St. Paul writing to the Romans. He was bored. With St. Paul and Romans, he slept again. After some time, he became alert. He heard the preacher saying, St. Paul writing to the Corinthians. Now Corinthians, Romans, St. Paul could not understand anything. He was fed up with Corinthians and Romans. He slept again. The third time when he woke up, he heard the preacher saying, St. Paul writing to the Thessalonians. This time he was irritated. Very irritated, he raised his voice up and said, Father, tell us, has St. Paul written anything to us Indians? <laughs> it's happened in India. You know, here a point. Often drunkards have a point. They miss their point. Here a point. This is what I must be asking. God spoke many things to Jeremiah. God did many things to Zacchaeus. God did many things to King David. But today, I am hurt by my husband. I am upset because of a financial situation. I am sad because of my children falling sick. I am angry because of what is happening to my to my family and and with all that anger with all that sadness with all the hurt feelings i'm opening the bible i'm asking god now if god you tell me i'm waiting to listen to you if god cares for me god will speak and god cares hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. god will reveal the whole truth and for this we must be able to read the word of god and wait upon God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit for God's word to become joy in my heart, peace in my heart. God's word to give me a message for my salvation revealing the whole truth. And that's the first, the first function of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal the whole truth. Hallelujah. 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 The second function of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is the power from above. The power from above. And the Bible tells us there are two streams of powers for the Holy Spirit. One, the stream of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For St. Paul writes to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Romans chapter 8, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then the other stream of the powers of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. I will explain to you all these fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit. We come to divine for uh, a retreat for spiritual leadership then we will train you in the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have a retreat August this week. To train spiritual leadership must be in the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Power of the Holy Spirit manifested in the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. But one thing we must know, in our family life, in our personal life, we must be able to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I spoke about marriage. Marriage in the Holy Spirit. A couple once came and told me, Father, we can't make it. We are not able to love each other. We are not able to understand each other. We are not able, we are not able to live together. I told them, God did not say that you will be able to understand each other. God did not say you will, you will be able to love each other. God did not say you will be able to make it together. No. God said, I will enable you. 
I will send the Holy Spirit. I will enable you to understand each other, to love each other, to care for each other. And that's what Jesus gave a new definition for marriage. Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. But God is united. Marriage is what God unites. But God enables us to remain united. And therefore, when we come to the Holy Spirit in prayer, the Holy Spirit enables us to live out a faith commitment, a marriage commitment, a love commitment. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that makes it possible for us. I remember, you know, in the Bible Trade Center, we have a rule, those of you uh, who have come to, those of you who have made a retreat in divine, will you please raise your hands up? Thank you, thank you very much, thank you, many of you. We have a rule over there. Every Sunday, we begin the retreat, every Sunday. Evening at 6 is the inaugural Holy Mass. At that time, the main gate will be closed and locked with watchmen. You can't possibly go out. You can't possibly escape. Because one side is a very large river. You can't possibly swim across. All the other parts are covered with barbed wire. You know, for anything good, you need some compassion. People don't know that, fortunately. But nobody can go out till Friday noon. A young man came for a tree. He meant well. He was a drug addict. He wanted to change. On the first day, Sunday, he sat through. He sat through. But then, uh, Monday morning onwards, uh, he could not. The withdrawal symptom was haunting him. He would sit in the hall and uh, he would go out and come back again. And by Monday noon, he became very unmanageable. By Monday evening, he said, I can't sit through. And he went to the gate. And there was a watchman. The watchman told him, no, you cannot go out. The retreat is started, you cannot go out. He was very angry, he came back. After half an hour, he went again. This time, he said, I will go out. He caught the watchman by the collar. And said, I will hit you. If you don't allow me to go out. The watchman told him, poor me. Why do you want to hit me? I also came here as a drug addict. <laughs> I ended up at the gate. If you make the retreat well, you may replace me here. <laughs> and if you really want to go out, then you need to get a letter from Father Director. And this young man rushed into my room and my, the watchman gave me a warning on the intercom. Father, an angry young man is going to see me. I was preparing for the Holy Mass and that's when I got this message. I got geared up. To meet this angry young man, he came straight to my desk and shouted, I want to go out. A very determined, high pitch. When he shouted like that, I said to myself, I must, I must impress him. I also shouted. <laughs> I shouted and said, you will not go out. When I raised my voice, this, this man raised his voice still higher. Is this the central jail of the country? I'm a free citizen, I will go out. I thought he was trying to intimidate me. And I said to myself, I was also intimidated. I raised my feet very high and said, as long as I am the director here, you will not go out with a determined full stop. He raised my voice so high, he lowered his voice for my good luck. 
I could not raise my voice to fire. And he murmured, Father, you are as bad as I am. I have a reason to shout at you. Because I am a drug addict. But you are a man of God. You have no reason to shout at me. I learned my lesson. I told him, my friend, I'm not angry with you. What did you say? I told him, this is the simple trick of a director to keep the people inside. And he sat. And, and I talked. I was late for holy mass by 45 minutes. But this young man remained for three months in the retreat center. And he went out totally thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, by anger, anger cannot be quenched. By raising our voices, no good thing will be done. And we need to learn this. We need to learn this. When I shout and you shout, the anger increases. And hitting at the darkness, darkness will not be dispelled. I a lamb, a lamb of love, a lamb of a smile, a lamb of joy, a lamb of patience, let a lamb. And that will dispel all the darkness. And that's what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are, love, peace. Joy, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, and gentleness. Let's be able to exercise the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our family life. Jesus said, when someone strikes you on the right cheek, what did Jesus say? Give to him back. Turn to him the other cheek as well. Is it possible? No! It's not possible. No human being will be able to do it. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, there is naturally the emotional response. I want to hit him back. But this is when I must wait and pray. Wait and pray for the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of love. The Holy Spirit of peace, the Holy Spirit of joy to be sent into me in order that I may be able to defeat that power of anger, that power of hot temper, that power of darkness, to defeat that power by, by my goodness, by my love, the love of the Holy Spirit. And this is when we need to understand what it means to wait and pray. Wait and pray. And that will enable us to feel the power of the Holy Spirit descending upon us. My dear sisters and brothers, let us, let us understand one thing. The powers of the Holy Spirit. The powers of the Holy Spirit will make our lives beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 Same way the fruits of the Holy Spirit, fruit of healing. So the gift of healing, gift of preaching, gift of prophecy, and all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's good for us to learn how to exercise these gifts in the right way. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are a lot of counterfeits. People claiming to have these gifts and leading people astray. But we need to know and learn the gifts of the Holy Spirit from the right sources, from the right sources, in order in our family life, in our community life, we will be able to be men and women of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The third name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Comforter. What does the Comforter do? The Comforter brings us the heavenly joy, the heavenly comfort. 
St. Paul tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 onwards, by the comfort with which God comforts us, we want to comfort you. The comfort that comes from above. God's presence becomes a comfort for me. In the moments of my distress, I feel that comfort. Mother Mary was so comforted by the Holy Spirit. She was able to rejoice. And she began to sing. In spite of all the troubles and trials and struggles that could happen to her, she was able to rejoice in the presence of God. She began to sing, my soul rejoices in God my Savior. And everybody began to sing. Elizabeth began to sing, praising God. And even the baby in the womb of Elizabeth began to leap for joy. The comfort of the Holy Spirit, this joy, this comfort is contagious, spreading to everyone around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Simon Peter and John, they were beaten up in the jail. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verse 41. For proclaiming that Jesus is the Lord and Savior, they were persecuted and tortured. Their backs bruised, bleeding, burning with pain. They came out, but they were rejoicing. The body was burning in pain, but the heart was rejoicing. Rejoicing in the power, in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Some of things could go wrong with us, and yet, in the heart of heart, there is the joy, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, there's a power of the Holy Spirit. There are two things in life. There's happiness and there is joy. Happiness comes from outside. Our source is outside. Joy wells up from within. This world can make us happy for a moment. The pleasures, the comforts of this world, the luxuries of this world can make us happy for a moment. But that happiness will vanish. But the joy that wells up from the Holy Spirit will remain forever. Making us men and women of joy. Unfortunately, a rare commodity today. A rare commodity. You talk to people. And as someone said, you scratch the skin. What comes out is not blood, but tear. So much of sadness, so much of sorrow in our hearts. Because the comfort of the Holy Spirit is not able to be felt in our hearts. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Spirit is the real source of heavenly comfort. And we are preparing ourselves for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit today. An anointing we need to feel all the time in our hearts. I remember Cardinal Sunis once asked a question to the crowd. I'm asking that question to you. Take a glass of water and put two spoonful sugar into that water and drink the water if that water is sweet two spoonful sugar added to water put in the water and you drink it with that water be sweet no water will not be sweet you need to stir it right after putting sugar into the water, you need to stir it. It is this stirring that we are not doing. The Holy Spirit is given to us in baptism. Every sacrament that we receive, every time we commit our life to God and pray, the Holy Spirit flows into us, but we are not able to feel the power, the joy, the truth of the Holy Spirit, because we are not stirring. And what is this stirring? The stirring is becoming the servants and handmaids of God. Prophet Joel prophesied 
chapter 3 verses 1 onwards on the last day I will pour out my spirit on on my servants and handmaids it is the servants and handmaids of God who feel the power of the Holy Spirit mother Mary and the promise came to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you but Mary said here I am, here I am. your handmaid your handmaid let it be done to me according to your word when she said it she began to rejoice she could feel the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon her this is what our spirituality is spirituality of the Holy Spirit always becoming servants and handmaids of the Lord who is a servant who is a handmaid a servant two things make a servant a handmaid two characteristics one a servant is all the time waiting to listen to the master's voice because the servant does not know what to do the servant must get orders from the master when we become servants and handmaids of God, we must be waiting upon God, waiting for God's word. Reading God's word, waiting upon God's word, listening God's word, spending time for the word of God. Always waiting, always waiting to hear what God has to tell us. That's one characteristic. Two, after I hear the word of God, I am ready to obey. A servant, a handmaid is always ready to obey. Obey the word of God, only God's word. Not the word of the world. The word of God. The word of God revealed to us from the Bible, from the authorities of the church, the superiors. God's word is revealed and we must be ready to obey obey God's word so that we may be